Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics and I'm back. This time with a much, much overdue comic book haul. So if you're interested in finding out what I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. Like I said, long, long overdue for a comic book haul. Have not had the opportunity to make this video. Um, I'm recording this now. This is what, June 2nd? And uh, this was from a comic haul back in, I want to say mid March. So, uh, <laughs> to say the least, definitely overdue. Um, decided uh, for a while now to get together with some local buddies in the southern New England area, you know, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Mass. Um, there's a bunch of YouTubers and content creators in the area. And um, we've done a comic crawl before in Connecticut. So uh, this time we decided to actually go to our good friend's house, uh, John Ross. And um, he, I think he had picked up a few collections over the years and uh, he just needed to like thin out some of the stuff. So he invited us over. Um, he also said, you know, could bring over some books too. You can use that for trade or sale or so forth. And just have fun. We pick up some books, do a little bit of drinking. And then uh, we went to a brewery right down the street. It was called the uh, Tilted Barn. And uh, I'll actually show you a picture of the guys that were all hanging out at John Ross's house and then at the brewery. So I'm going to drop that right now. But um, didn't do any footage. Um, if you want to see footage from today, I'll actually drop down a link for Will, Will the Beast's channel. He took some great footage. Um, you guys can check that out as well. So um, I did bring some books there to sell and trade, and uh, I'll explain that after. So I'll show you the books that I got from the day there. So in no particular order except for the uh, last two go uh, books were Golden Age. So I'll show those at the end. So. First book, Batman, issue number 475, um, and this is the uh, first appearance of Renee Montoya. Um, always thought this was a cool cover, never owned this book before. I like the mobster cover on there, it says the uh, Return to Scarface Part 1. Um, it is, like I said, minor key, first appearance of Renee Montoya, later becomes the second question. Um, this is a nice book, I want to say it's like a 10 to, I don't know. $20 book on a good day. Um, it, it was marked at 12 bucks, but that's not, you know, I didn't pay that. Uh, next book. This is Detective Comics, issue number 872. And I picked this up because this is an early jock cover art. Um, I really like the mask, the little gaslight type of mask. It's really cool. You see um, a hook there in the inside of one of the eyes. I just love the, the early jock artwork. Um, I don't have his first uh, uh, cover art. I forget which one it is, if, if it's 870 or 871. And I don't have 880, which is a, you know also a great cover. But I uh, was happy to pick this one up. Uh, next book. Uh, this was actually one of the, I think, first books I picked up while I was there. And, um, and I'm surprised nobody noticed that. But this is a great book. This is Punisher War Journal, issue number one. Never had this book as well. And if you notice here, it is signed. And uh, it's signed by Carl Potts. He is the artist and the writer of the uh, issue. And uh, I thought that was pretty neat. And it's, you know, it's, it's the origin retold of the Punisher. So minor key, but definitely a nice pickup. Uh, this one I got, this next one, for just for the cover art. Um, I don't know anything about this title, but the second I saw the cover, I knew exactly who did the cover art. And uh, this is Danger Girl. Danger Girl, I think Revolver. It says Revolver here at the bottom. Danger Girl, I don't know which volume this is. Uh, number one. And this is the, you see on there, RE, it's the retailer exclusive cover. Uh, I think these are usually like one in tens, if I'm not mistaken, for the most part. Um, but I got this because it's a J. Scott Campbell cover. 
And I'm typically not the biggest um, J. Scott Campbell cover art fan, to be honest. I know a lot of people love his artwork. I feel like a lot of his female artist, you know, drawings are very similar and they don't really have any like depth or detail to them. But um, this one definitely caught my eye. I do like how it is the, uh, the trade dress is foily as well and the bottom on there. And it also came with a cool sticker on the back. So uh, I was happy to pick that one out. Um, next book. I'm always on the lookout to pick up these uh, DC Universe labels. And uh, this one, I think I've had this one in the past. I'm not sure. Or I have it up in the um, one of my long boxes. But this is Detective Comics issue number 676. Um, I do like the... Uh, you know, martial arts fighting cover scene there as well. And as you can see, DC Universe. So uh, I know there were a few uh, DC Universes there in, uh, in John Ross's uh, long boxes, so I was happy to at least pick up one. Next book. This one, I know John had probably, I want to say 10 to 20 of these. And you know, when you, when you pick up a collection, you often get one of those books, random books that have like 10 to 20 plus copies of, but no particular order. <laughs> and I think this was the book that he had. And um, when I, once I saw this, I was like, hey guys, we all got to get one of these books. Like, and I think all of us did ended up getting one of these books. And uh, similar how to my buddy Tony uh, loves his yarn man. And we all have like a yarn man number one, just kind of as like a funny like spoof type of thing. I told him, let's do the same thing with this book. I've never seen this book. I've never heard of this book before. And this is Captain America. This is a no, no number issue, but it, from the Marvel Comics group. But it's one of those, uh, you see Captain America media, uh, facing the asthma monster. <laughs> so back in the 80s, um, they did a lot of these, 80s and I think 90s. They did a lot of collaborations with these organizations to help put out awareness for whatever the topic may be, whether it was um, whether it was violence or um, prevent drug prevention. In this case, this was medication awareness. So um, in this issue, he's obviously fighting the asthma monster, and I believe there's some advertising or, or promotional piece inside that uh, actually shows you how to use medication. So let's uh, open it up. I haven't yet opened it and read it. Uh, it's a really thin, like super thin comic book. And um, apparently these are like super hard to find. I've, I've never seen one of these issues. And uh, you can see on here, open it up. Attack of the Asthma Monster. So let me see, I wanna get to that part where they do the, like the awareness, because uh, Let's see, because these are always really interesting. And uh, this book was actually pretty near and dear to my heart because I'm a, I work in the medical field. I'm a respiratory therapist. I give, you know, medications, nebulizers all the time, part of the job. And you can see here, see Captain America talking about showing how to use an inhaler, which I thought was pretty cool. And... Uh, they actually use that to help defeat the uh, the bad guy, the asthma monster, as you can see here. There you go. So really cool. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, like I said, I might just get this uh, get this graded just for you know shits and giggles, because like I said, I work in the medical field. Just something something you don't often see. In a, oh yeah, here you go. As you see at the top, compliments of your physician and Galaxo Incorporated. So really neat. Like I said, not something you see every day. Um, and when I last checked, they were, they were surprisingly valuable. They were at least selling for 20 bucks online. Not many of them. Because it is, it is an odd, it is an odd comic. But uh, very cool. I'll put that away after. All right. Um, more key books. All right. So I know this book, Will was actually uh, looking for this book, and he actually, I think this was one of the books he got right away. I think uh, John ended up A-OKing -OK it to him. And he actually had another one in it. They had a lot of Spidey keys. So if you liked Spider-Man, uh, they definitely had quite a bit in there. And I ended up picking up a few of the Carnage 
um, Spidey's like 360, 62, something like that. And I ended up just a OK in that to my buddy Jade as well. But um, he had this book, Amazing Spider-Man issue number 299. Um, I'm sure you've seen this book before. You know what this is. If you're not aware, this is the first appearance of Venom. Yes, I said it. The first appearance of Venom. A lot of people say, well, it's 300 is the full appearance. And I agree, it is the full appearance. But this is the first appearance. He appears in the last page, has his name on it, full splash, first appearance. We know 300 is the most valuable, but you meet him for the first time in 299. So that was cool. I'm glad I picked that up. I, I had one, I sold one a while back. And uh, I'm glad to get another one back in the collection. Uh, this one I've never had, and this is um, Amazing Spider-Man number 258. I always thought for some reason this cover art was kind of weird, just like oddly drawn. i uh, seeing the, um, the symbiotes, you know, hands just being stretched out like that. But there is some minor key relevance in this book. Uh, it's the debut of the Spidey bombastic suit, which was kind of weird. He put like this, like this character in there with a paper bag over his face, um, you know, but yeah, minor key, not worth too much, but just a cool key to have. And uh, getting down to the last couple of books, uh, I didn't, you know, oh, this is a cool book, never had this one, had to get some Green Lantern, you know, of course, this is uh, Green Lantern issue number 132, and this, I believe, is the first cover art on DC by Neil Adams. So that was cool. All right, and then the last two books. So, like I said, I ended up bringing some books in there to either sell uh, slash trade. I brought like a long box and a short box worth of uh, a few like, you know, decent keys. And um, John was collecting or looking to collect some of the Thor run and the Fantastic Four run. And I ended up having a Thor 337, is it 337? I think it's, yeah, 37. The first appearance of uh, Beta Ray Bell. I had that graded at um, a 9.6, and then I had a Fantastic Four 67, um, and a 66, but he wanted the 67, which was one of the um, the early origins of, uh, of him. So he wanted those two books, so I used those as um, trade, to, uh, to get this whole haul. And uh, he was kind of getting like a linear collection of uh, 337, 338, and 339. He has them all now in a 9.6, which is really cool. And uh, I think they were all in newsstands as well, because mine was a newsstand. And um, I traded those two books for all of this and these last two books. He sent, went up to his um, office. He had a lot of really cool, like nice, um, Silver Age, Golden Age books, some slabs, and so forth. So that was, I was like amazed by the. He has a huge collection, and um, and he knows I like pre code, pre code horror, sci fi stuff like that. So I ended up getting. He showed me this book first, and I was like, "Oh, you, you got other Golden Age as well," and I got pretty excited. So I I've, I've been trying to collect some more Golden Age, especially like holiday covers. So this is a, a classic cover. This is Captain, Mar uh, Captain Marvel Adventures, issue number 42. I believe this is a Macro Boy cover. Um, it says Season's Greetings from Captain Marvel. Just a great cover. Always wanted to get this book. Just haven't found it in a while. And I was happy to get this as well. Beautiful cover. So that was the first Golden Age book. And then, like I said, we went upstairs to his room. He showed us some... Um, other books because like I said he was interested in those two books I had to trade and then he showed me some pre-code horror and then I saw this book and I was like I need this book I need this book because um, it's a bondage cover and it's a Johnny Craig cover and I've not had my ch chance in the you know in the years I've been collecting to get a Johnny Craig cover and this one's a beauty and I looked at it you know thoroughly um, and we kind of agreed upon a grade. I think I think we wanted to say it was like a four five to five zero, maybe a five five, if we get lucky. And uh, this is Vault of Horror, issue number thirty nine. Great cover, um, really sought after in the pre code horror uh, 
you know, genre. And I was really happy to pick this up. So, uh, really sweet. Um, you know, especially being a Johnny Craig. Johnny Craig does some great, great uh, pre-code horror covers. So, yeah, that was really cool. And, you know, and John, I, you know, John was very happy to get those two books as well. So I thought it was a really nice trade. Everyone was happy. And then um, after we did that, we ended up going to the Tilted Barn, which was right down the road. We hung out for a while, got, a, you know, a few rounds of drinks. And then we came back and a few people did a little bit more digging. And then I had to head out. So uh, that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this haul. A much, much overdue haul. Um, if you did, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Marksbook Comics.